I find it quite interesting that there's so many people that don't practice their faith. They claim to be a Christian or they claim to be a Catholic, but yet they don't practice their faith. And now that we're in the middle of a so-called pandemic and there's mandates to save their job, they want or expect religious leaders to give them a religious exemption. What I find most in, most interesting is that you have these political figures that look to the Catholic Church and because a select few priests or pastors agree with their agenda, they blanket that on everyone that wants to apply for a religious exemption. And because these few priests or so-called pastors feel that there's nothing wrong with the mandates or with the jab, they then say, well, these religious leaders say it's okay, so... I don't think the mandates should be granted to these people because we have a few religious leaders that agree with us. But what they fail to realize that just because you have a pastor or a priest does not mean that your religious views, values, or opinions line up with his. He could be a person that believes in abortions, but yet you don't. He could be a person that don't believe in demonic possession, although he's a religious leader, but yet you do. So the belief systems and the values differ from individual to individual. It's not about a religious organization. So when people file or claim a religious exemption, I'm speaking sincere people. They're not doing it based on their religious organization's doctrine. They're going according to their own personal convictions. I have a scripture, a couple of scriptures I'm going to read to you. And one is taken from the book of James, the first chapter, reading the 26th and the 27th verse, and it reads as follows. And pay close attention to how this is worded. If any man, and this is singular, if any man among you seem to be religious and bridle not his tongue, but deceive his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Now, this is not speaking to the entire congregation. It's speaking regarding one individual person. If any man among you, among the whole, seem to be religious, and bridle not his tongue. He don't know how to tame his tongue. Don't know how to be quiet. It says, but deceiveth his own heart. This man's religion is vain. And then the 22nd verse, the 27th verse says, pure religion and undefiled before God. And the father is this, to visit the fatherless and widow in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So you have people that live a wicked lifestyle on a daily basis. People that doubt God 
that speak evil of God and God's people. And yet now that they are about to lose their job, now everyone wants to claim a religious exemption. And I really don't believe it should be granted. Now they're looking for pastors and priests that don't know them and that they don't know. They expect these religious leaders to sign off on their schemes just to save their jobs because so many people are now desperate. And we're living in crazy times. We're living in times where you don't know who's who, even when it comes to your own family. People that have always been there for you now seems to change and go in an entirely different direction, even go as far as not even wanting to deal with you anymore. You now become a virus to them. The love of many has grown cold. I want to read another scripture in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, reading the 4th to the 14th verse. And it reads as follows. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. In other words, don't be fooled by these people that come in Christ's name. The fifth verse says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. We see that happening right now among so-called religious believers and even among religious leaders. But you have to be careful and you have to activate or allow the Most High to activate his discernment within you to be able to know what's right and what's wrong and what's godly and what's ungodly. See, everything that glitters is not gold. Everything that sounds right is not right. So many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. And then the sixth verse says, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. We've always heard of this. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Now, there's always been famines, there's always been pestilence, and there's always been earthquakes in various places. The difference is, and this thought came to me earlier, that when it comes to the earthquakes, earthquakes are going to increase on the earth. Earthquakes are going to increase on the earth. We're going to start witnessing and experiencing very extreme, intense earthquakes. Noticeable earthquakes globally like it has never happened before. That's what makes this prophecy so unique. It's going to be enhanced earthquakes. Not just tremors, but extremely destructive earthquakes in diverse places. And in the eighth verse it says, all these are the beginning of sorrow. So now what you feel, your fears, your sorrows, your loss of death, your sickness and diseases that's coming upon you, your family members, your loved ones. The Bible says this is all the beginning of sorrows. 
in the ninth verse it says, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. Now, pay close attention to this because those that uh, go against certain political or government standards or ideals, although they are false, you will be brought to justice, as they say. Because we're living in times where justice is not what justice used to be. What was once known as justice and fairness has now become in opposition to what they now perceive as truth. So the lie has become the truth and the truth has become the lie. So you will be brought to justice for being truthful, for speaking truth, and not accepting the lies. I read an article within a day or so that a bill was introduced to bring the justice, bring to justice those that speak falsely about the pandemic. And they are now saying that it's the fault of anti-vaxxers that so many people have lost their lives to a pandemic that is completely out of their hands, that they had nothing to do with. And it was talking about how people could be arrested and jailed for up to two years. Just by speaking out differently than what is told to you. So you have to comply. You have to submit. Regardless of how untrue it is. You have to submit to that lie, to that beastly lie, or you will be punished. So the ninth verse says, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. We see that happening right now with all the lawlessness that's happened in various cities. In New York City, it's becoming like it used to be back in the 70s, unsafe. Where openly, in broad open daylight, people are being mugged and attacked and murdered. And yet nothing is being done because police is being defunded. The 10th verse again says, And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, in other words, and because iniquity shall increase on the earth, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And the 14th verse says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. But the verse I want to focus on is the 12th verse, where it says, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. So we witness people being mugged and robbed. Old women being attacked, being drugged out of elevators. A woman being beat down by a football player. And people can just stand by and watch and record and no one goes to their defense. There used to be a time where uh, the hoary heads, the uh, elders, the gray heads were protected. But now people just record and allow things to happen because the love of many has grown cold. 
But the Bible says that, but he that shall endure unto the end, and many are not enduring because they are taking themselves out. They can't handle the stress and the pressure. Things are getting so bad to the point where people are becoming demonically possessed. They're opening themselves up to demonic possession because of the amount of stress that they find themselves under. But the Bible says that he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. So in spite of what you believe or what you accept and what you don't accept, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. So we're living in very wicked times now. And people have to choose ye this day who you are going to serve. You just can't use religion to get out of a mandate because it will catch up to you. People now are desperate. They don't want God. They want to save their jobs. But the Bible says that he that shall endure to the end shall be saved. So feedback, tell me what you think until next time. I'm fearless.